All right, so welcome to a video for Unit 1 Exploring One Variable Data. This video covers Topic 1.7, Summary Statistics for a Quantitative Variable. Now, I already covered this in a video. What we're going to actually do in this video is actually look at some examples where we talk about all the different summary statistics that we've learned and how to actually apply it all to an actual set of data. So let's dive right into a set of data here. So I have a sample of 13 females, and I ask them to give me their commute times to work. So how long does it take you to get to work? One way, home, to work, how long it take you to get? And these are the 13 times I got, going all the way from 5 minutes to 45 minutes. So, you know, the summary statistics are values that can tell me something about this data. So we talked about measures of center, right? So measures of center would be, you know, mean and median. All right, so the mean is pretty easy to find on your own. I'm not going to stress you guys out. I mean, you could add all these numbers together and divide by 13 right now on your own. It's really not overly difficult. And after doing all that, you should be getting 20.77 minutes. All right, now what about the median, which we actually really have no symbol for median. We just kind of write median, so there's no like symbol for it like there is X bar. Now, again, to find the median, they do have to be in order. So it's important that the numbers are in order, which they already are for me. And now there's 13. So remember, there is a formula to find the location of the median, not to find the median. So all you got to do is take 13 plus 1, and you divide it by 2. 13 plus 1 is 14. 14 divided by 2 is 7. That doesn't mean the median is 7, please. It means the median is the 7th value if they're in order. So we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There it is. Now, that means there are six values above it and six values below it. That is the definition of the median, half below, half above. All right, so that is the median. All right, then we talked about measures of position, right? For example, we talked about Q1. It's the 25th percentile. So again, now it's kind of easy to just do it when you can actually see it here, but we got six values at the bottom. So now here's the trick. Now that's six, right? So that means the Q1 is going to fall right in between here somewhere where I got three above and three below. So in this case, what I have to do is I got to find the average of 11 and 15. So 11 plus 15, and then divide that by two, that would be 13. Or you can just kind of think about it on your own. So there's Q1, 13. And then same thing with the top. So we got right around here is going to be Q3. Sorry for my very poor squiggly mark there. All right, so we got three above it, three below it. So let's see, 24 plus 29. And then you're going to divide that by two. 26.5 is Q3. So pretty easy, not too difficult to do any of that. Um, let's talk about percentiles real quick. So let's just say that Kelly took 15 minutes to get to work. All right, there's Kelly right there. Or actually, you know, who knows which one's Kelly? doesn't really matter. But how do you find a percentile? The definition of a percentile is the percentage of data at or below you. So all you got to do is count how many values are at Kelly or lower. So that would be the three 15s, those are all at Kelly, and then the 11, the 8, and the 5. So that'd be 6. So the percentile would be 6 divided by 13. So she'd be at the 46th percentile. So 6 values are at or below Kelly, divided by 13 total values, and that is approximately 0.46. So she'd be at the 46th percentile. All right? 46% of data is at or below her. That's pretty easy to calculate, right? Not overly difficult there. All right, let's talk about range, one of our measures of spread. Well, pretty easy. 45 minus 5, range is 5. Pretty easy, not trying to overcomplicate this. Um, IQR is the spread of the middle 50%. So keep in mind the IQR is going to be simply Q3, 26.5, minus Q1, which is 13. So 26.5 minus 13 is going to be 13.5. So that means the middle 50% of data has a spread of 13.5 minutes. Pretty simple to understand that. All right, and the last one to talk about is standard deviation. Now, standard deviation is S. It tells you how far typical data is from the mean. And if you remember, I told you this is a pretty crappy number to find by hand. So what I now want to actually teach you how to do is something that I know you're going to love. I'm going to teach you how your calculator could do all of this. Literally everything I just went over, your calculator could do for you. It's actually really simple. All right, all you got to do is get your calculator, turn it on. Now, you're going to hit mode. This is one of the first things you should do. And go all the way down to the bottom and make sure that Stat Wizards is turned on. So you should see an option for Stat Wizards and make sure it's turned on. Now, if you don't have a Stat Wizard option on your calculator, then you don't even have it. So it's automatically turned off. 
I'd recommend updating your character that way you have stat wizards. It'll make things a lot easier for you. All right, now what we got to do is turn it on. That's good to go. You can quit out of there by hitting second mode. All right, now what we need to do is we need to enter these times into our calculator. So we're going to go ahead and hit stat and the edit button right there. Number one, stat edit is where you can enter data into your calculator. So go ahead and hit enter on edit and you have a list. You got list one, list two, list three. Actually, you can keep scrolling over. You should have six total lists, but they're all up there, right? So I'm going to go to list one and I'm going to enter in the data. So you're going to enter five, hit enter, eight, enter, 11, enter, 15, enter. Now they do not have to be in order. So even if I gave you these and they were out of order, it doesn't matter. Your calculator is super smart. It could figure all of it out for you without them having to be in order. And I got to move this real quick so I can figure out those other ones were 35 and 45. 35 and 45. Now I will tell you this, if you type something in wrong, everything that you're about to do is going to instantly be wrong. So please make sure to really double check, go through the data one more time in your head, you know, just kind of cycling through it and make sure you didn't type anything in wrong because that will really screw you up. All right, then you can hit second mode and exit out of that and get back to the home screen. All right, now here's how we're going to do everything. All right, hit stat again. This time you're going to slide over to calc, stands for calculate. And we're going to choose one variable stats because that's what unit one is all about. This entire unit is one variable stats. And we're going to hit enter. Now, the first thing we have to do is tell it where our data is at. Like I said, there are upwards of six lists where you could put data in. We put our data in list one. So I'm going to hit um, second number one. That is how you access list one. If you look on your calculator, there's a little blue L1 above the number one. So second L1. If you did list four, for whatever reason you put data in list four, then hit second number four. Pretty easy. All right, leave the frequency list completely blank. We'll only use that one time this year. and It's not now. So just leave that blank. If there's something there, you can just hit clear to get rid of it. And then hit calculate. Now, lots of numbers on the screen, but I'm going to tell you all the ones you need. First, the top, X bars. The mean, 20.77. Now, the mean's not hard to do by hand, but we'll save you the time. And then go down a little bit, ignore all this other crap, and go down to the S. There's your standard deviation. Right, standard deviation, 11.13. So I'm going to come back here and write that down real quick. 11.13 minutes, all right? All statistics are in the same unit as everything else in your problems, all in minutes here. Now, all this other stuff we'll eventually learn, but not right now. Now, what I want you to know is as long as you don't hit anything else on your calculator, you could move the cursor down. There's a little arrow right here that says scroll down. Keep scrolling down and you will find the min, which is kind of obvious. You'll find the max, which I don't really need a calculator to tell me the max. But if you think about it, in large sets of data where it's all mixed up and jumbled, maybe you don't know the max. Now, what else is there? Well, you see the median, 22, Q1, 13, and the Q3, 26.5. How awesome is that? All right. Now, the only thing the calculator does not do for you is calculate the IQR. But remember, the IQR is a very simple formula, Q3 minus Q1. So once you have Q3 and Q1 on your screen, then you can just simply do the math. 26.5 minus 13 is 13.5. All right, so pretty cool. Now, this is great, right? This is nice. But I will say this. This is really needed for S, standard deviation. You don't ever want to calculate that by hand. It is a very lengthy process. All right, so let's get back and talk about what that standard deviation represents. Remember, I tried to explain this. It means how far typical data is from the mean. So if I got 20.77 minutes, it means that most data is either 11.13 minutes above the mean to 11 point, I'm such a bad um, drawer, I'm very sorry, 11.13 minutes below the mean. So if I go 11.13 minutes down and I go 11.13 minutes above, that is where most of the data falls. Now, is that big or is that small? Well, to me, that's kind of a wide gap. You know, that's almost a 22 minute spread from the bottom to the top. And in terms of driving to work, it's kind of a lot of time, you know what I mean? In terms of driving to work, um, if you look at your data, it's actually, you know, kind of spread out. Like somebody only takes five minutes to get to work and somebody else goes all the way to 45 minutes to get to work. 
So again, when you go up and down, you know, I'm just going to kind of round this, make it a little bit easier in my head, but 20 minus 11 is 9. 20 plus 11 is 31. That means that most people, most people, large majority of people are anywhere from 9 to 31 minutes to get to work. Now, you'll notice there were a couple people that were a little bit lower, 5 and 8. There were a couple people that were a little bit higher, 35 and 45. But remember, the whole point of standard deviation is it's telling you where most data falls in relationship to the mean. All right, now one more thing I want to show you real quick. I want to talk about outliers. I am going to erase this a little bit just because I'm running out of room. Now, outliers involve those fences, if you remember what I talked about in the video. So let's go ahead and show you how to find those fences. All right, so we have what we call the upper fence. The upper fence is going to be Q3, 26.5, plus 1.5 times the IQR, which is 13.5. Then we have the lower fence, which is going to be Q1, 13, minus 1.5 times the IQR of 13.5. And I wrote 13.15. It's 13.5. Sorry about that. All right, so now, again, these are not statistics. These are just numbers that are going to help you identify the presence or absence of outliers. So if I go 26.5 plus 1.5 times 13.5 on my calculator, I get 46.75. Now, I'm now going to look at my data. Are there any values bigger than that? And the answer is no. My max is 45. So there's no values bigger than that. So that means there's no upper outlier. So 45 may seem like a long time to get to work, but it's technically not an outlier. All right, same thing for my lower fence, 13 minus 1.5 times 13.5. I get negative 7.25. Now, it doesn't even make sense to have a negative amount of time to get to work, but are there any numbers in this data that are lower than negative 7.25? Absolutely not. Five minutes is the lowest number, clearly. So five is not outlier either. So if you um, think a number is an outlier, follow the fence method to determine if there are any, and you'll know for sure. All right? Don't just say, well, yeah, 45 is a while. I bet it's an outlier. Well, if it doesn't meet the qualifications of being bigger than the upper fence, no, it's not. All right. So um, let's just play a what if game, you know, just so we're, we're, I want to be clear here. What if our upper fence was 32.6? Well, then we would officially identify 35 and 45 as outliers. But that did not happen. That did not happen. I was just playing what if game. But it's as simple as that. You find your upper fence, any values above it or any values below the lower fence are considered outliers. All right. That's it, guys. It's pretty straightforward and pretty simple. Nothing overly complicated here. But definitely use your calculator, especially when it comes to standard deviation. I mean, a lot of people can find median by hand and the mean by hand. But man, you got that calculator that can do it all for you. It's going to save you lots of time, especially on tests and quizzes. All right, that's it. I hope you learned how to do all this and hopefully it made sense.